Guys, in this uh, video, I'm going to go over uh, exam number five. Here's how I created exam number five. I divided actually initially exam number five or wanted to divide exam number five in three uh, in three sections. Section one, I call it Newton first law. Section two, two I call it Newton's second law. And section three, I call it a vector addition. Uh, Newton first law, I gave you three problems from Newton first law. Problem number two, 17 and 20. And uh, the section two, Newton's second law, I give you problem one, 18 and 19. And uh, vector addition, I gave you problem number three, problem four, problem five, problem six, problem seven, problem eight, problem nine, problem 10, problem 11, problem 12, problem 13, problem 14, problem 15, problem 16. 14 problem came from vector addition. 3 problem came from Newton's second law. That's 17 and 3 problem came from Newton's first law. And that's altogether 20 problem you have to solve. And uh, now I'm going to go over every single problem. This is the problem one and I'm going to go over the problem one from test number five. Could not equilibrium Not equilibrium means acceleration is not zero. Acceleration is zero. If we look over here, acceleration is not zero. If we look over here, acceleration is zero. If we look over here, acceleration is zero. So, acceleration is zero means equilibrium. Acceleration is zero means equilibrium. Acceleration is zero means equilibrium. So this is the answer. But let me explain why acceleration is not zero over here and acceleration is zero over here. Let's do convert it to VT graph. DT to VT and VT to AT. Uh, VT to AT. DT to VT. And VT to, of course, AT. And VT to, of course, AT. Because our final goal is AT. Alright, if DT is a uh, a diagonal line vt must be a horizontal line and acceleration must be zero proof if uh, vt is a horizontal line acceleration must be zero uh, proof if vt is a diagonal line acceleration must be must not be zero proof if dt is a horizontal line vt uh, must be uh, zero and acceleration must be zero proof so the answer to question number one is of course b or two number two okay. what does that mean when sum of all forces acting on the body is zero that means acceleration is zero okay that means velocity can be zero or velocity don't have to be zero velocity can be more than zero. Velocity can be 10 meter per second. It doesn't really matter. Let's say velocity 5 meter per second. Or velocity 2 meter per second. Or velocity is 10 meter per second. These are all example of a constant velocity and therefore is all example of Newton's fast law. Now let's draw that thing over and over and over again. I cannot stress enough on this concept. Please pay attention. I'm going to explain it a different way. Uh, draw it six times for a reason. So right here I'm going to write one, two, and three. Two is right here. This is Newton's first law. This is also Newton's first law. This is Newton's second law. This is acceleration is cannot be zero. This right here acceleration is zero. This is acceleration is also zero. Right here velocity has to be more than zero. Or velocity has to be less than zero. Over here velocity cannot be zero. Over here velocity can be two. Our velocity has to be zero. 
Okay, this is Fs. This is Fs max. This is Fk. This is Fs. Okay. A uh, few more things. Uh, this is uh, uh, all right. So okay. So I think we cover everything. Okay. So this is velocity. This one has velocity has to be zero. Okay. This one velocity has to be zero. I said that already. This one velocity can be ten. Velocity can be twenty. Velocity can be one. But velocity cannot be zero. However, right here, acceleration is zero. Okay. All right. This one velocity can be one. Velocity can be well. Velocity has to be increasing. Velocity is increasing. Or velocity is decreasing. This is velocity increasing. This is velocity decreasing. They both. They both. This is velocity increasing. This is velocity decreasing. All right, they all tell you the same story, and that is in the friction graph. If this one is F A and this one is F A. Now let's see whether the option number A. Slow down and stop. Slow down and stop. Seem like here this object is slow down. So of course, this one is. I'm going to draw it again. Since slow down and stop is this one, so of course A is at this location, location three. B is not good. Why is that? Because you cannot change the direction of the motion without the acceleration. For example, throw this marker in the air and draw the trajectory. At one point, the marker was here, and I throw it with, let's say, 10 meter per second. And then over here, the velocity is uh, less than 10 meter per second, almost zero. Over here, velocity is zero. You, so the direction is changing. You see, every single moment, every single fraction of a second, the marker is changing the direction. And you cannot change the direction without changing the velocity. How do you know you're changing the velocity? Hey, you look at the arrow. arrow arrows, become, uh, uh, arrows are becoming smaller. So you cannot change the direction without changing the velocity. And changing the velocity has another name, acceleration. And in this case, this acceleration has another name, this G. Therefore, B is not correct. This falls under location 3. Okay, let's continue. Acceleration uniformly. Well, this is, uh, this is where you acceleration uniformly. Why is that? Because acceleration is, cannot be zero over here. So you accelerate uniformly. So C. D. Continue moving with constant velocity. Are you moving over here? At this location, yes, you are moving, yeah. Because your velocity cannot be zero, that means you are moving. Your velocity can be one or 20 or 10, doesn't matter. So yeah, you're moving with constant velocity. So right here, okay. So therefore, this is D. Hopefully you understood problem number two. Now let's move to problem number three. Problem number three. So two forces act concurrently. And let's say angle between these two is 30 degree. Let's say angle between these two is 90 degree. Let's say angle between these two is 120 degree. And let's say angle between these two is uh, 180 degree. If it is zero degree, then of course three plus three is six. If it is 30 degree, uh, then of course this uh, 2 is 5.8. If this is 90 degree, then it is 4.2. If it is 120 degree, then 3 plus 3 is 3. If it is 180 degree, then 3 plus 3 is 0. So what do you see? 0 degree you get max. 
and 180 degree you get mean however you will never get more than six and you will never get less than zero okay so the resultant of the two forces is the greatest when the angle between the two forces would be zero degree this is problem number four and i'm going to use the geometry and trigonometry to solve this problem say this one you have force one this is 30 newton and force two this is also 30 newton and this is 120 degree angle all right so what are you going to first do uh, we're going to use uh, the the uh, the trigonometry so you have force you have force one force two force one x force one y force two x force two y so force one is 30 cosine zero 30 sine zero 30 cosine 120 30 sine 120 so this is 30 this is 26.1 so x plus x is 15 and y plus y is 26 all right so if you do square root them you get uh, 26 squared plus uh, 30 square uh, 15 square so 26 square plus 15 square hopefully this this is 30 the square root of 26 square plus 15 square and that is yeah that is 30 so this is gonna give you 30 all right now let me uh, explain how that happened all right this one has let's see this uh, we know that this is 30 this one has two component wow listen two component the x component And the y component right x component, y component all right if this is 120 let's put 30 over here or over here if this is 120 this must be uh, 60 if this is 60 then uh, this must be 90 and this must be 30 if this is 90 this must be 2x so 2x is equal to 30, so x is equal to 15. If this is 60, this must be x root 3. This is the net. This is 30 minus 15, which is 15. On the top, you have uh, this. Now, this take this one and put it on the head of this one. And this is, of course, 26. And this is, is the resultant. This is the resultant. And resultant is, of course, the square root of 26 square plus 15 square, and that will be 30. So you have an object, and you apply 5 Newton and 7 newton i don't know at the same direction you can do it at the same direction so this is an object sitting over here and you can apply 5 newton all right so you can apply 5 newton and 7 newton at the same direction if you do at the same direction then if the angle is zero you get 12 if you do it at the opposite direction 5 newton and 7 newton at the opposite direction then of course then of course you get what you don't get zero you get two all right so let's see what does that mean. all right so an object all right so you apply 7 newton and you apply 5 newton okay 
So the maximum gonna be this one and minimum gonna be this one. This is maximum and this is minimum. This is seven and this is five. In the problem I say say so from zero degree to 180 degree. Uh, as you move from zero degree to 180 degree, what would be the resultant of the two vectors if you change the angle from zero degree to 180 degree? This one gonna give you, of course, 12 Newton, and this one gonna give you uh, two Newton. So the answer is from 12 to 2, and that is C. In this video, I'm going to go about problem number 6. I do two ways. I'm going to do the parallelogram, and I'm going to, of course, do head and tail. Parallelogram, I'm just going to copy this one over here on this side. And... Uh, and I'm going to copy this one on this side. Uh, and this would be the resultant. And this is the law of parallelogram. And this is the law of parallelogram. Okay, so this is how you're going to do it. And um, if I do head and tail, of course, uh, this. Head and tail, uh, this is F1. So draw F1 first. This is F1. And draw F2 right here. So you can do a little better. So F2. And then the resultant should be like this. Notice that the direction and this direction is the same. It's because no matter whether you use parallelogram or head and tail, the direction of the resultant would be the same. Solve problem number seven. And I ask you to show me two vectors. Well, this resultant has an X component, as you know. This is the X component. All right. And this diagonal line has a Y component. All right, that's it. And then if you do it over here and put the head and tail method, so draw F1 and F2, so F1, F1, and put F2 over here, and C to force to have the resultant you start with. Now we're gonna do number eight. Vector one which is 5 Newton, and I have vector 2, which is 12 Newton. I want to find the resultant and its magnitude. So let's do the head and tail. So I have vector 12 Newton. I have vector 5 Newton. And let's do the head and tail. And the resultant would be uh, 12 squared plus 5 squared, and that would be 144. 4 plus 25, 169, and that would be uh, 13 Newton. Problem number 9. I ask you to find the missing vector, missing component of the resultant R. Okay, so the missing component, uh, if you do the parallelogram, then well, let's do the other way. Uh, this would be uh, this one. All right. This is this. Okay. So now let me show you a few different ways why this is this. Okay. So if I draw this vector and then draw this vector. 
draw this vector and draw a parallelogram. And you see that I am forced to have the resultant just like this. All the resultant should have the same direction without any problem. The direction of the both resultant are the same. Okay, so that must be like this. Or you can, of course, put it over here instead of there. So this two is as same as this two. Because A will not give you the greatest, this is 6, this is 4. If you do head and tail, you can move it over here. Alright, and you can do this one. So the square root of 6 is square plus 4 is square is, I don't know, is probably 7. Okay, um, B, 4, and this is 6. So this is 0 degree, and this is 90 degree, by the way. Zero degree, however, they are not same in direction. So, and uh, two, and in this case, it's seven or seven point two. So, I lost some of the videos I created yesterday. So, I'm gonna have to go over those problem again. Uh, that's pretty painful. Uh, so, problem C. I have a vector like this, which is six, and I have a vector like this, uh, which is. Uh, four. This is already in head and tail. Uh, so all I need to do is uh, use one of the six ways I ask you to use. I don't know which one to use, but um, well, let me see. I can use the law of cosine. C squared is a squared plus b squared uh, minus two a b cosine theta. So c squared is a squared. Let's say six c squared plus b squared which is 4 squared minus 2, 6, 4, cosine. You can write this is uh, negative 30 uh, x and y axis. This is negative 30. Or you can write cosine 330. It's the same thing. Negative 30 is 0.86. Uh, cosine 330 is also 0.86. So C is uh, 3.2. So C is going to give you 3.2. Now I'm going to go over the D. Alright. Now I'm going to go over the D. D is uh, look like this. This is already in head and tail. So when it is head and tail, you don't have to do anything. You just need to find the angle between head and tail that's all you need to do so let's assume that this is 120 so c squared is equal to a square plus b square minus 2 a b cosine uh, 120 uh, so c squared is 4 a square plus 6 a square minus 2 4 times 6 cosine 120 and c is gonna give you 8.7 square root of 2. That's the displacement. So the square root of 2. The square root of 2 is more than 1, of course. C. C you have 1 because this is uh, 1, this is 1, this is 1. So you are 1 meter away from the origin. So this is 1. So D. Uh, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, and this is 1. So of course this is 0. So the answer to the question is square root of 2, which is of course more than 1. Uh, so number 12, and 25 Newton, because uh, 20 plus 25 can give you the max, which is given 45, and 25 minus 20 gives you the mean, which is 5. Alright, 
So yeah, so it is um, option number C because uh, that can give you the range from 45 to 5. So let's go over problem 13. 1, 2, uh, 3, 3 blocks raised. All right. And two block to the north. One, two, two block to the north. And one block to the west. And one block to the west. And two block to the south. So uh, let's see who. Three blocks to the east. Three block to the east. Two block to the north. One block to the west and two block to the south. Two block to the south. So two block to the south. Uh, so what is the total displacement? So total displacement is two block to the east. From 14 to the right and one for uh, one force is uh, this is 30 and one force is to the south and that is 40. we want to know the the direction of the resultant this is the direction of the resultant we also want to know the magnitude so magnitude would be 30 square uh, plus 40 square and that would be uh, 50 newton that is Question number 14. This is 100 Newton and I gave you a vector. This is 40 Newton and I gave you three options. Option number one, 20 Newton. Option number two, 40 Newton. Option number three, 80 Newton. And option number four, 150 newton. Okay, now when you add uh, 3 plus 4, what is the max you can get? 7. What is the mean you can get? 1. Can you get more than 7? No. Can you get less than 1? No. Alright, so the range, so we have to find the range. What is y? Okay x plus y give you a max x plus y give you a mean max cannot be uh, uh, max has to be uh, whatever the max is uh, whatever the mean is uh, this is the max this is the mean this is the max the hundred has to be here between the max and mean all right that's how we're gonna do it all right so 40, let's use the different number. So 40 plus 20, uh, 40 minus 20, 40 plus 20, 20 and 50. 40 minus 40 is 0, 40 plus 40 is 80, 80 plus 40 is 120, 80 minus 40 is 40. 150 minus 40 is 110, 150 plus 40 is 190, okay, so you have mean and you have max, mean max, mean max, mean max. So 100 is outside because mean is 20, max is 50, and 100 is outside the range. 100 is outside the range because this is 0, this is 80. 100 is outside the range. This is 40, this is 120, so 100 is inside the range. It is possible to get 100. Maybe 71 degree will give you 100. 70.5 degree. This is mean, 
this is max 100 is in fact here all right so only this range will give you 100 maybe there in the loop this thing this one we're gonna call a it's 22 kilometer Melbourne is moving to the north and this is east this is west and this is south and then we make southeast direction 60 degrees so 60 degrees back back to x axis so one thing to know that negative 60 degree is equal to 60 degree southeast is equal to 60 degree below x axis they all are the same thing okay or you can say 360 degree, uh, 300 degree 300 degree is equal to negative 60 is equal to that's the same thing all right okay let's do the trigonometry uh, this vector i'll have to give you vector b is 47 so vector a b bx ay bx by a is 22 cosine 90 22 sine 90 47 cosine 60 47 sine 60 this is this one this is 22 this is 23.5 this is negative 40.7 why negative this is fourth quadrant so we are dealing with the first quadrant this is vector a vector a is in the first quadrant so x is plus y is plus vector b is in the fourth quadrant x is plus y is minus when i do the uh, trigonometry then you will understand it better okay so let's do the add so this is 23.5 and this is negative 18.7 all right so what does that mean that means you have a vector you have y y is negative 18.7 and you have x x is 23.5 and this is your uh, resultant this is your resultant okay and your resultant is the square root of 23.5 square plus negative 18.7 square and that gives you 30 so now let's see whether that makes sense by geometry geometry this diagonal line has two components right all right so let's draw the diagonal line here this diagonal line is now here it has two components right don't forget that it has x component and it has it has x component plus 22 so this is your 22 and here you have this one this we already found out how much is this this is your uh, 20 uh, this is your 40.7 40.7 okay so 22 and 40.7 that must be 28 uh, that might be a uh, that, that, that might be 18.7 so this is 18.7 so this is 18 18.7 and this one is of course uh, 23.5 23.5 so this is 18.7 this is 23.5 and this is the resultant so you see the connection between the geometry and trigonometry so this one would be where is 60 newton so fg is 
60 newton fn is 60 newton mm, what you need to find the magnitude of minimum force needed to set the rubber block moving across so like minimum force so this is at location 2 so at location 2 means location 2 means fs max the entire diagonal line is fs but this one is this location fs max all right and this location is fs min all right okay so we want to know fs max so fs max is equal to mu s fn 0.85 times 60 so this is 51 newton with the 51 newton so what happening applied force is 51 newton and the force of friction is also 51 newton so this is a constant motion but 18 so problem number 18 Christmas gift which is 4 kilogram and let's say your sibling is applying some force on it 50 Newton due to this net force is accelerating 10 meter per second square what you will know is what would be the force of friction okay so Newton was born on Christmas day so you gonna write Christmas equation F equal to MA. Put it over here. Write all the forces acting on it. This is to the east, so positive. This is to the e west, negative. M is 4 kilogram. Acceleration is 10 meter per second square. FA is 50 minus FF is 40 newton. So FF must be 10 newton so this is 10 newton and that's the answer and if you want to wonder where this is uh, at location 3 because this is accelerating so let's go over problem number 9 a toy car this is 0.5 kilogram and the toy car is slowing down so slowing down slowing down means right here this is what slowing down means this is what slowing down means slowing down also means acceleration is zero, uh, less than zero is because there is some force of friction uh, what I want to know is what is uh, the, the mu. In this case, it is mu k because uh, it's location 3, and location 3 is mu k. Mu k is ff over fn. I gave you this one, this is 1.2, 1.2, and divide by, of course, fg is equal to f. So Fg is uh, 5 Newton. So Fn must be 5 Newton. The magnitude, of course. So 0.24. So this problem falls under location 3 for this reason. Now we're going to do the last problem. I'm so tired. I'm going to turn very quickly because I have to eat. It's starving since morning few things I want to mention is constant velocity that means location 2 well the constant velocity entire diagonal line is constant velocity the, the entire diagonal line is fs so this is fs mean and this is fs max Okay. Fs max is constant velocity. Fs mean is also constant velocity. Fs entire thing is constant velocity, but Fs max is velocity is not zero. 
<laughs> velocity can be one, or velocity can be same, or hundred, doesn't really matter. Okay. Constant velocity and uniform fast law. So it falls at location two. This problem. So scenario one, I have this. Scenario two, I have this. Scenario three, I have this. And scenario four, I have this box. So there is some applied force. F A, F A, F A, and F A. And that is five, two, three, four. Five, two, three, and four. All right, as soon as you apply five Newton, this must be also five Newton. FF has to be five Newton. Otherwise, you don't have the constant velocity, all right? Constant velocity, you can have constant velocity on this and this cancel. This FF must be two Newton then, okay? Then FS must be, uh, I don't know, constant velocity, FS must be, FF must be uh, three Newton. So F, FF must be four Newton. So is Again, I lost the video, uh, part of the video I created yesterday, so tired and taking me forever to finish it anyway. So YB is the correct answer. Let me quickly explain it. So FA is two Newton and FF is also two Newton. And that's, you probably think that's also the case for other uh, mass because all the masses are one kilogram. You can make that case, but some materials made of uh, low friction material, for example, copper. Copper uh, is made of low uh, friction materials than, for example, steel. Uh, steel. Uh, so, or wood, for example, wood made of really low friction materials. Wood is uh, 0.36, probably, I don't know. So, wood made of uh, really, wood made of uh, really low friction. Uh, wood has low friction than steel, or maybe wood has low friction than the rubber. So then this one may be made of wood, the other one may be made of rubber, other one may be made of steel, other one may be made of copper, and among them you choose the one that is made of the least friction. Not super easy problem, but once you understand it, it becomes really easy.